Meow. Meow. So as always, we're going to start off with an apt update. That's weird. Oh no, Comcaster. So I was going to record a new Proxmox video, and what happened? For the first time in two years, my ISP changed my IPv6 prefix delegation, and that really messed me up. I've gotten so used to just memorizing that prefix that I didn't even think it could have possibly changed. So it took me like an hour to figure out what the problem was, and that was frustrating enough. And then after that, I decided I had to renumber my network to match the new prefix. I was planning on renumbering anyway for my new network, but uh, I guess I'll just do it a little bit early. So in general, IPv6 renumbering is not a big deal and it's not something that happens often. Most providers will relatively statically allocate a prefix. In my case, it stayed the same for two years. And if you're a business of really any size, you can get a provider independent address if you want to. And that's a, an address space like a 44 to 48 prefix. And uh, you advertise it over BGP and all is good. I am not quite big enough for that yet, maybe someday. So I stick with my prefix from Comcast and it doesn't change very often, but in this case it changed. So this would be the same as like in a corporate world if you decide you need to move from 192 to 168 to 172 or to 10, got to change all the addresses, renumber everything. So now it doesn't happen too often, but uh, it's a frustrating time. In general though, IPv6 is better equipped to deal with these renumbers. Um, there's no DHCP server in general, so Slack updates. Slack will track the prefix from the upstream, advertise it downstream. All the clients get new addresses, they're all happy. The only thing that really gets affected are servers that have static addresses, which in my case is all my Proxmox clusters. Um, there are ways to make Linux do static suffixes or to do dynamic DNS, so it's not a problem. Um, Proxmox though is adamant that it has static addressing at least for Corusync, and that basically means static addressing on one of the interfaces. And um, yeah, that got messed up. So anyway, my Proxmox clusters were down for a little while while I figured out how to fix it, and I broke one of them. So you're going to follow along and uh, figure out how I did that, because I got it back working eventually. So as a bonus, while I was uh, checking all of my servers to renumber them, I found out that one of my hard drives had died, and I didn't even know. So now I'm going to drive down some rabbit hole of building a whole new storage network, probably with Ceph. I don't know, we'll see. So uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to see that one. So in theory, renumbering a Proxmox host is pretty easy. We just change the IP address in the web UI. But if only it were that simple. So if you do just change things in the web UI, it will appear to work, you'll be able to connect to it, but things will be subtly broken. If you're using a uh, single node, they'll be subtle. If you're using a cluster, it'll be pretty dang obvious that everything's broken. So there are basically four places, three or four places on each node that have the node's IP address sort of hard-coded. So we have SC network interfaces, the network configuration. That's where we actually set the IP address of the adapter. We have SC hosts. That's where we map the node's host name and fully qualified domain name back to its IP address. And this is required in clusters. It will not work correctly if that is not set properly in the cluster. Um, in my case, I had to add an SC resolve because I had to point to a new DNS server, which you might or might not have to do. And the Corusync configuration, etcpv corusync.conf that has the address of each node for Corusync purposes. So you're like, well, I guess I got four places to change now. So log into the node, change SC network interfaces, change SC host, change SC resolve, change SC PV Corusync, and then you break everything again. So Proxmox has a cluster wide file system that it uses to share all of the node configurations, high availability stuff. Everything is synchronized across the cluster and it does this using Corusync. And if this goes down, like, you're in a whole world of trouble. All of the nodes won't talk to each other. If their configs get out of sync, they'll be angry at you. So be very careful when you go through this. If possible, have a second network running at the same time. I found this made it very easy to uh, renumber my, one of my clusters. So in one of my clusters, I had a primary network that was my access network that was connected to my main network. And I had a secondary backend network. And the backend network was just for Ceph, but I enabled Corusync on both of them. And what this means is when I'm going through the renumbering process, the cluster stays intact because it's able to communicate through Corusync on the backup network. And I didn't renumber the backup network, so it was still fine. You can also do this by using two different address families if you don't have two network interfaces. So you can use IPv4 and IPv6 as two sets of network addresses, and if you renumber one at a time, then it'll always be able to communicate on one of the two address families. I had IPv6 and I didn't have backup networks, so Corusync got real, real upset. 
So my solution was to manually edit Etsy network interfaces, Etsy hosts, Etsy resolve on each node, and then on one node, Etsy edit PVE sync.conf and change it to update the IP addresses of every single node. From now on, none of the other nodes will join the cluster because they have older versions of the cluster config. So now what we need to do is stop the cluster manager on all the nodes. So that's system control stop PVE cluster. Now with all the cluster managers not running, we can mount the Proxmox cluster file system locally. So that's uh, PMX CFS dash L that'll mount locally. Now it'll get, you get some big warnings here because it's like kind of dangerous to do this. But um, yeah, so you mount the Proxmox cluster file system locally. Then you take the config file at ccoresync.conf that you updated on the first node and you copy it with SCP to all the other nodes. Because they can still log into each other with SSH, they just can't communicate like their normal ways um, with Coresync. So once you've SCP'd it to all the other nodes, then you can reboot them all. The cluster will come back up and it'll be happy. And it took me way too long to figure this out. So hopefully this helps you next time you break your Proxmox system. Some other tips I had for my broken network. Um, keep your router advertising routes to both subnets. In my case, I switched my router from my old prefix to my new one. And I didn't think to keep my old prefix as a routable like subnet. So all of the devices with old addresses, I couldn't get to them anymore which was kind of irritating. So if you change numbers, keep the old subnet and the new subnet at the same time so that your router can figure that out. That'll make you much, much happier. And be careful, don't break Proxmox. So that's the story of why I was up at 10.30 at night trying to fix my Proxmox cluster. Um, everything else came up pretty much fine. All of my storage is mounted with DNS names. Uh, so those all came up fine because I just had to change the DNS addresses to map to the new prefix. Not a big deal, that all came up, that was a happy. Uh, all the VMs came up fine too once the cluster got back together. So yeah, be uh, be careful with Coresync. Don't mess it up. Um, I got a Discord server down below if you want to message me. And I guess I'll see you on the next adventure.